What's up guys, welcome to the artclasses.com Today uh, it's going to be a tutorial on painting over So this one is a paint over for one of the randomly picked from my Patreon subscribers So if you are my Patreon, you can just post your image And then uh, once a month I'll pick one image randomly and paint over And try to explain to you what uh, you can improve on your painting so this is the one that I paint over and this is the original uh, painting. So that is, I mean, it's kind of have a good potential and all that, but uh, you need to have some sort of a setup of the scene and uh, send a depth, but uh, I will go into the depth in the video. It's about 35 minutes long of the paint over and I will show you from the start to finish. So, all right. Um, yeah, just go to my Patreon and then you get the monthly exclusive content. Usually you get about five, six, sometimes seven video um, on from the beginning, uh, like beginner tutorial to like uh, if you level five, you're going to get a more uh, advanced illustration, not advanced, but intermediate like speed painting and painting the composition and all that. All right, guys, uh, and the tablet giveaway is still going on. So uh, if you just become a subscriber and post your question and comment down below on any of the video in August, then at the end of the month, I will announce the winner and then I'll ship the, the Huyan tablet to you. Okay, let's get started. All right, so um, this is the original painting of one of my patrons on Patreon. Um, the idea is good uh, you have like a creature and then the dude and um, but let's check the composition first so you break it down into rule of the third I'm not sure if that's even close rule of third then you should So that will be your kind of focal point. So your focal point is good. Um, you have it there, but things you need to improve on is the depth of field. What you need is you need a, a background, mid-ground, then foreground. So I would assign these to the mid-ground. So this will be a quick explanation, which is uh, just in case you didn't want to stay throughout the whole video. So background, you have a specific value assigned to whatever that's in the background. And um, the value of the foreground, usually whatever the object that are closer to you will generally um, be darker, but there is also a, a trick to that. So it's more contrast or something. Um, it will take a while to explain, um, but I will explain in the video. And what I'm doing here is I'm separating that part, which will be the background, I push that all the way back and adding some jungle in the mid-ground. Then, um, this guy, he looks close and this guy kind of way, I know, I know that he's close, but you want him to be like a monstrous kind of snake. I could add more. This is like a, a really quick um, painting, so it's not a finished illustration by any means. Just get the point across. And then I change the position of here so you can see a bit of his face and the pose of like he's ready to uh, fight or throwing spears at this gigantic snake and then uh, you can see a little bit of foreground which is the foliage here foliage here to frame these a little bit and all this grass here which i could spread them uh, or making a better silhouette on that but the most important point is basically foreground which is mid ground which is this guy and the background so all right let's uh, get started so this video is going to be a little bit over maybe 30 to 40 minutes paint over um, so it's not going to be that pretty so i make a copy of the layer i'm just going to cut out um, in the folder i'm going to cut out just the back so i can make the background so cut it out, paste, do adjustment, or level, make it lighter since uh, object that are further away will be lighter. And then in the mid-ground, we're going to do, uh, we're going to cut that out also. Going to desaturate a little bit there. 
uh, and then we'll cut out the mid-ground, including the snake. And also you didn't have the correct perspective because if he was to stand right there, it's way too big. Then I'm just going to put the mid-ground into around the mid-tone, but now I'm checking the value of what is the darkest value in the painting. Uh, the darkest value is around like less than 20, uh, about 23 on the mid-ground, so I'm just going to move it up the scale or make it a bit lighter. I want it to be about 40%, uh, 35, that's good enough. All right, so um, so the mid-ground mid now is in the mid-tone. Then I'm just going to uh, cut out the section of the mid-ground. Uh, what am I doing here? Okay, so I'm just going to cut another section and make it uh, make this guy separate in the foreground. Going to make him darker because it's closer. So that will be... So now you can see a little bit of the depth of field from closer to further away then um, now I'm just gonna start painting start from the background I'm just gonna name the background and then just gonna move it scale to make it lighter gonna make the lightest light a little darker so this would be about 80 or 79 Change it to blue. And I'm gonna add some color back back in later. So now the horizon the horizon is um, kind of a bit darker, but it's uh, more consistent. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of saw brush. So as it go up, it will get slightly darker because if you look at the horizon, horizon, the horizon will be the lightest uh, because that's the end of your uh, horizontal line. And that's why it's called horizon, horizontal, same thing. And as you go up to the sky, uh, it's going to get darker in most or almost all the landscape. Now I'm going to start making the mid-ground, adding some kind of bluish green making some grass, some shrubs um, and I'm gonna cut this snake out just on a separate layer so I and I will move it down a bit so it's closer or make the ground a little more level to the dude in the back but then I'm, I will have to change the dude in the back because he looked way too big I mean, in comparison to the snake, he, the snake still look pretty big uh, compared to the normal snake. But I want the snake to be gigantic since it's a painting and it's fantasy. You want it to be um, very threatening and special. Like any creature in a video game. Like in the video game, you see like a snake at a normal size or like a boa size. You're not going to be that excited. You're gonna make a concept for a video game. You wanna make that snake or that naga or that hydra kind of gigantic because um, first you wanna be able to see them on the screen uh, so you can make some hit. Uh, and second, uh, they look cooler without the texture and stuff. If they are small, then you couldn't really tell if they have like good design or not. So uh, the bigger they are usually better. So now from there to here. Uh, then I'm just going to add some shrubs, foliage in the background. So at this level, it's going to be a background. So I'm just going to put a really quick foliage. The first one first. And I like to zoom out so that I can see if my value is off or not. Just painting there. And again, if you become my patron at any level from level one to um, level five, uh, and if you put pose your artwork, then um, you will get a chance to get picked, and I will give you a critique and paint over just like this here. And then I made a copy of the shrubs. 
so that I don't have to repaint it. But then I have to repaint it anyway, but it saved me a lot of time so I don't have to uh, scribble too much. Just scribble in the place. It's just save some time when you can copy and paste. A little more shrubs there, but I think it's, I don't want it to uh, go over the focal point. I want to leave the focal point a little more contrast, so I want the light from the background to give the head a little more contrast, the head of the snake. And then some foliage, closer foliage, so it's just going to be slightly darker. So all this foliage is going to be in the background. So I'm just laying out the background, and then I make a copy of that layer. Uh, I'm just going to make it bigger, and copy it again make the foliage like really big. So in this foliage, I'm just going to change the value to make it darker. So now we have the mid-ground foliage for the mid-ground. Because in jungle, it's a little uh, complicated because you have so many multi-level uh, of foliage, uh, tree trunks, and a bunch of vines, and a lot of layers. So this going to take me about 40 uh, 30 to 40 minutes or maybe longer and it's not gonna even be pretty it's just gonna be um, more like the calms like what you see in the beginning um, so now we have the mid ground what should I do I'm gonna make it slightly darker so you can separate the mid ground and the background a little bit better then what do we do change the opacity on the background to so make it slightly lighter now I need to add some uh, tree trunk there, light, so that's like those tree trunks or those um, trees are like way further out in the background. So we're going to make them, the further away, the smaller, the apples come closer, uh, it get darker and the trunk will be thicker. So that's how you give it distance or depth of field uh, or an illusion of depth of field. Then we're using eraser to erase them a little bit. Now I'm going to add some saw brush and pushing and pulling the value a little bit. Um, like on the top, I'll make it slightly darker. In the mid ground, I'll make it slightly lighter. Then I'm going to go to level and readjust those uh, that I just painted. Uh, try to change it to multiply. Let's see if it can work. Nope, it doesn't. But that's okay. I moved the opacity down. Now I retweak the shape of the snake a little bit. So using the shape modifier and change the shape. And I have the head of the snake on a different layer. So I'm going to make another layer, a uh, new layer for here. It's going to be the tree trunk in the mid ground. And as you can see, it's slightly darker and a little bit more brown. But it still have the hint of green and blue in it. Uh, you can't really use uh, the, the fresh color of, I mean, the solid color of the brown. You have to always add the color and mix them in with the scene so that the color will get uh, harmonized because there's going to be a hint of uh, the color of the sky that I put earlier on, which is blue, but now it's kind of look a little more green since there's a, a lot of green around it. Um, and the further away it's going to get, it depends if it's um, a daylight, it will be more desaturated. But if it's a, well, usually, yeah, the further away it's going to get uh, desaturated. So the lighter the value, the desaturated, uh, the object will get. But the darker the value, the more saturated you usually get. Like shadow will get really saturated, but sometimes you can't really see it because it's shadow. And usually the objects that are in um, overcast light will be uh, its true color because there's no direct, uh, no direct light hitting it. But if it's on a sunny day, you get the bleach out color if the object gets hit by the light. But in the shadow, it's always be more saturated. So now I add some shrub and some butchers on the mid-ground and I'm going to add one more layer in front of this super snake here because the snake they usually like to hide in the tall grass or some wetlands or something I don't know but usually every time I see snake uh, 
except uh, I've never seen the rattlesnake yet. I've seen cobra. They're usually hiding in the tall grass or uh, some somewhere you can hide. So now I'm just using a, a weird brush <laughs> that will give me some sort of a um, tall grass stuff, but I didn't really like it as much. It's the wrong purpose there. I'm gonna change the brush here. Still pretty similar, but um, but it's getting me the nice edge basically. Uh, all I want is the edge because I'm gonna be I'm gonna go back in and paint over it anyway. And now I'm using another brush which is giving me tall blade grass. I'm just gonna use it pretty sparingly, uh, light and dark, kind of alternate randomly, and then I'll go back and tweak. Uh, the value and clean up the, the edges. So not all the custom brush will be used the same way, basically. Uh, some of the custom brush I use for its texture. And this custom brush I'm using here, I using for its shape, uh, sort of texture also, but it's got a specific purpose since it looks like grass, then it can be used to just for grass. But some custom brush, some some kind of custom brush are a little more versatile, uh, like the one that I use a lot for texture. I can use it for texture of the rock. I can use it for texture of the tree. I can use it for the texture of the monster, and I can even use it uh, in state of uh, soft brush to give me transition. So now you can see that the background is setting nicely. You have mid-ground, foreground, and the background. But it's still lack of mood because it's really bright. And it looks, it doesn't look, it looks like a daylight. There's the, all this color giving me no indication of threat at all. It's like a happy jungle. Um, so uh, I'm gonna have to tweaking the color balance or something a little bit to give it a little more of a, uh, warm because red and something that are warm and darker will give you a bit more of a situation so you can have a, a scary situation you don't want to be happy i mean um it's not the mood is not too bad it's not too happy but it's not quite where i want to be so now i'm just gonna paint over this dude all the way around i'm just gonna set up the dude in the middle here and make him smaller by standing in there. Um, I was thinking maybe give, give it like a, a mud swamp or some sort of swamp or something, which uh, when you're standing in a swamp with a slippery snake, it look a little more scary because on the ground, you can still jump around and move. You are quicker, but if you're in a swamp, you are smaller. It gives you a little more of a creepy vibe feeling. Like when you're in the mud swamp, you're like, oh, you can't move really fast. So I think it would be a good idea to imagine somebody in there and encounter a giant snake. That would be funny. I wouldn't want to be there, but yeah, I've been to the mud swamp before. And it's not pleasant. And it makes you slow and it's gross, but it's fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it gives you a little creepier look. I mean, a, a creeper vibe also, because you have talk. You can't really see anything because there's grass everywhere, right? So now if you look at the grass. The grass, those grasses are taller than a dude, so it's going to be pretty fun, and uh, you can have a lot of obstacle when, for your vision. You know, when you're trying to see something. So yeah, and my phone keep ringing, so I need to turn this off. All right, so now I'm going back to the creature and I'm just making a selection on the silhouette that I just make a selection of, of the creature and just using texture brush and paint it. Oops, I'm just gonna give it a little bit more light, but I don't want to make it too light. And then I'm just gonna correct the perspective on the bottom a little bit. Yeah, I haven't done speed painting in a while. I've been busy, so but I'm gonna be doing more. But if you are my Patreon, you will see tons of them because I always do them. But now I'm just um, focusing on making good stuff for my Patreon so they can be pretty happy with the products. 
and yeah you, if you subscribe over there you see me upgrading or updating tutorial monthly and you can also get a chance to get pinned over like this over here and get feedback so now i'm just changing the shape of this creature a little bit trying to give it uh, more form and correct the lighting but i often trying to change the design so i'm just gonna not making it too because well, I often try to add spike and texture and all that uh, but we're not going to have that much time so I'm just going to do uh, what I'm comfortable with here just going to change the design a little bit because in reality if you are going to paint a uh, snake uh, so some sort of cobra I would probably look at the reference a little bit but since I'm just going to wing it here I'm not going to look at the reference. All I want is basically looking for the correct lighting. So now I'm just putting the light as a default, like overcast. There's no nothing shining on the surface of the creature yet. But eventually I will probably add some light because sometimes the light will go to the foliage on, uh, pass through the foliage on the top, right? So it will, you can sort of dictate how the light would cast on the creature and make it cast directly on the focal point or on the spot. So now I'm changing its mouth a little bit. The silhouette doesn't look as good as I want. I wanted to open it wider because uh, when I fix it, it kind of make it look a little more tiny, too small. And the wider mouth, you can see more teeth and more teeth or more fang are scarier. And now I'm just going to add the eye socket here. And, and also if you want to uh, take my class, usually on the one-on-one -on -one and on the group class, I will paint over and explain just like this to all you guys. Uh, but you get it every week. So, and chances are you will improve because we're going to be doing this every week. Turn in your homework and I will paint over your stuff. And then I'll tell you uh, what you need to fix on. So now I'm changing the silhouette of the, and it's, uh, again, uh, silhouette is really important. If you got a correct shape, then you can put the lights on. If your shape is not quite there yet, then you can't really give it the light because everything's going to look weird. And again, if you haven't seen my video on line, shape, and form, there's relationship between to get a nice silhouette, you have to be somewhat of a decent drawer. So because it's, it's related. So if you can see the outline, then you probably can see the silhouette. Um, it, but it's going to take a while to be able to just make a silhouette right off the bat. Because I have a, a lot of questions on how did I make a shape without drawing it. So basically, it's the same thing. But you can uh, change the habit of draw not changing the habit. You can go one step further so you kind of eliminate one step which is the step of the outline and you just uh, trying to draw the line in your head before you put the shape on the canvas so once you already see the shape in your head and know what it's look like which a lot of times come with mileage the more you paint the more you'll be familiar with the shape and um, then you're going to be able to do the shape without having to go in and draw and it's a lot faster because you eliminate one step, right? So now I'm using um, overlay and mm -hmm. using lighter value to paint on the dude. So now you see the dude or um, the native is trying to, I don't know, I was thinking, I forgot that he has a, a spears. Uh, so I was doing, I, was, I had him do the bow trying to shoot this uh, snake dude. Uh, the snake got a snake creature and I add a little bit. I was I got a little too excited here. I add too much light, which is kind of dumb, uh, and I, I kind of illuminate the mirror and reduce the light because those are the light that came through from the front. and flipping is good. And now I I add the color balance layer and adjusting the color because the color was kind of muted, so I increase the green a little bit and make the shadow a little more warm, and then I'm gonna some darker because it's too bright in here I'm gonna use multiply and creating a little bit more mood 
Well, maybe I should have darkened the whole thing. I'm not sure. And now I have two million layers, so I got really confused. Um, don't know where to press them and down. That's going to slow me down. So now use overlay and use darker value of the green. And it didn't get any dark. I'm going to use the marble to darken. Oh, that's way too dark. Uh, I guess I'm just going to erase that. No. I'm just going to. So basically, I'm trying to darken the scene in here. So don't be confused at what I'm doing. I'm using all, all kind of tools here. Okay, that's uh, output level, reduce. Reduce the light works. That's good. So now it's getting a little bit lighter. I mean darker overall. Because on the horizon, it's, it's too happy. Right? It's too bright, right? So darken that a little bit. And then... Now I have to rearrange everything because I set it up a little bit too light. So now I have to darken the, um, the tree trunk in the back a little bit more, increase the overall lighting, and then so overlay, darken it, turn on that color balance again. Okay, now that doesn't look bad, but the back's kind of a little bright. I'm gonna cover that up, and I'm gonna make this tree trunk a little darker using texture brush. Make a selection or we're going to multiply. And usually if you are in the class, you are able to ask me a question and I can stop at any time if you get confused. But since this is a pre-recording video, um, you can't stop me and ask a question. Otherwise you'll be like, hey, what question? So I know some of you are probably getting super confused here because I just keep going. But um, this is a normal speed. so. But yeah, if you're in class, you, you'll be able to ask me a question and I will, and you get the PSD file. But uh, all my patrons will, all my patrons will get the PSD file. So, so you get to see all this layer and see what it does. Um, so yeah, so you become my patron, you get a PSD file and a video and all this stuff. So now I'm making another layer on top because I think we need some kind of foliage in the foreground. It's a little too empty. We need some kind of uh, shape to frame this on both sides, actually. So, and I think the snake has a little bit too much light, so I will tweak it later. But we are about to run out of time, and we're still nowhere near what I want them to be. Um, the dude looks kind of cool, but I'm going to change him a little bit later. And I'll probably have to sort of, maybe I should, Take a break and think about things a little bit. But okay, so now I'm, I'm making all this foliage, some vine hanging. There you go, and I make the overlay layer, trying to lighten that up a little. But I end up doing give me too much light, just like what I did to uh, the snake, the serpent over there. Okay, so now I'm just using normal and paying a really super bright color onto this foliage because I want to give it some light. And it's enough to be a big mess. <laughs> Too much light going on. I have to erase it. But I can leave some of the lighter color, I guess. It looks like some, some part of the foliage might get hit by the light. There. That still might be too bright because it's almost as bright as a background. But I'll give it a test and see. Then I'll get that real light. Because like I said, in the jungle you have this section of the open foliage. So some part of it will get hit by the light and some part will not get hit by the light. So you can have a really nice effect on the jungle because uh, the light, the ray of light is off the frame. So all right, um, now I'm going to increase the light on that dude a bit. But I'm not sure if that was a good location for him to stand on. So the reason uh, sometimes you see me go under the layer of color balance and every time I go under and paint, I have to turn the color balance off because otherwise it will pick the wrong color. Because you have, if you have the color balance on and use color picker, uh, it will you will pick the wrong color because it's the color was affecting by color balance that was on the top if you go underneath to paint then you're gonna have to turn that off but if you paint on top of the color balance here 
then there's still some way you can turn it on, it's fine. Um, but in the paint under, then you're gonna have to chain, uh, turn that off so you can get the work. So now I have him hold his spears. But the problem is in here, it, the spear and him, uh, it looks pretty two dimensional, even though I have the foreground, midground, background, but the location of both characters are on the same distance. And that's not as cool as it should be. So it looks, it looked too, too dimensional. It looks kind of a bad setup. So in the end, I move him closer to the camera a little bit, just like the original, but uh, the character is not going to be as big. So to offset the distance a little bit, so you can see a bit more of, uh, so you can get a, a bit more sense of depth, basically. So, and now we almost there. I just gotta tweak a bit more things. So now I, I turn the color balance on. So don't get confused why the color change. Um, so when I paint under, I have to um, turn it off. And when I paint over, I can just leave it on. So now I'm just gonna make a selection of this guy and cut it out. And then copy and cut it out. So now I merge everything down and then I copy and then cut it out. And then flip it. And like I said, I moved that dude into the front. Now, um, everything is basically still the same. Now I'm just gonna add some texture onto this serpent thingy a little bit. And I'm gonna try to make him, I'm gonna try to refine him a little more even though I'm not gonna have that much time. Cause I need to go make more tutorial for Patreon. And do some work basically. Um, all right, so we're almost there. Adding a bit more shadow, and pretty much when you are doing a scene in this uh, with the background, with um, all these things. you will have to control the value like the value on the foreground the value on the midground the value on the background so you have to set a specific value for uh, the brightness if you have it set up for the foreground you have a, a darker value with a, a good amount of section uh, so you break it down here in the midground you have certain section of value and the background you have a certain section of value so if you start off your calm in monochromatic or achromatic, which is just one color or black and white, um, it will be a lot easier than painting with color to most people. Some people are pretty good with color right off the bat. So I don't know how they do it. Um, like in this one, I'm doing it in color, you know, but it takes me years to be able to kind of know what the hell it is. But the easiest way is just to, to be able to read it in mono or in acro first. And then from there, you'll be able to kind of squint and sort of to see the value and the color. Because saturation also has a role in value also. Because uh, the more saturated color is uh, making the value darker. So, so now um, I'm just, just going to make a generic shape of the serpent head but eventually I changed my mind because it's look a little bit too boring so I'm just gonna add some spike or something um, just gonna add some yeah it's probably gonna be easier for me if I just add random spike uh, but I'm on the wrong layer I need to go on top layer and add spike in the back because the spikes are easy because it's just, uh, if it's really small, if it's not that big, if it's a small spike, you just add light and shadow. You just have to know where the direction of the light's coming from. And then you just, uh, just use a triangular shape and light and shadow. Now I'm adding some nostril, a uh, little bit of the 
more fang on the other side, maybe some drooling here a little bit. And the dude, since he come close up, he doesn't look as good anymore. So I'm going to have to ask a little bit more detail. So that's going to take some time, but it should be worth it. Uh, we arrange the foliage a little bit because it's too lineage. Um, like sometimes if you shape a too lineage, it's, um, it's going to look kind of dumb. I mean, it's, it's going to, the composition is going to be too uh, intentional. So you gotta break up the whenever you have straight line, uh, if it's not buildings or perspective, if it's more organic, you're gonna have to make it less straight to make it look a little more natural, a little more organic. Uh, but if it is a building, you have straight line, that's just totally normal. But if you're making the, what I'm making right here, which is a jungle scene, then you're gonna have to make it a little less um, geometrical or less symmetry. Now I'm just gonna add some light on the tip of this grass blade, maybe that might be a little too much there. I'm just gonna erase some, because the light's coming and hit on that, uh, look more like a T-Rex <laughs> than a snake. So um, the light hitting on the T-Rex face, right? And then hit on the tip of the grass blade, some of it, and some of them doesn't get hit by the light, so it's just, the light just kind of come in uh, asparagally, like it's get the, uh, tiny little sprinkle in a certain spot because of the, uh, the foliage up on top is blocking some of the light. If you look at a bunch of uh, jungle reference, you see that uh, usually in jungles, in forests, or in some, uh, uh, the where there are lots of trees, you're gonna get, the light's gonna get blocked. So, anyways, I hope this tutorial is helpful. And if you become my Patreon, then I will be able to do more tutorial like this. So if I hit my second goal, which I should have hit it last month, but I didn't get any support from you guys. Uh, I mean, not as much as I expect anyways, uh, then I'll be able to do more videos. So um, on the pain over, and if you want a pain over, then go there and support it and you will get a more pain over tutorial like this. Um, you know, anything help. Fuck, come on, man. Um, Alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So whoever did this, um, yeah, you can just go back and try to uh, paint this. And thank you for your support. And thank you for everyone on Patreon that gave me support. Um, I'll try to make more and cooler tutorial. And thank you for watching for all of you on YouTube yeah. and subscribing. And again, um, the what am I gonna say? Um, the tablet giveaway is still going on, so you can uh, become, it's easy to enter, so become a subscriber, and um, just post a comment down below, and in the end, I'm just gonna randomly uh, select the winner. And also, like I said, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash ziatabtara, it's easy. You get tons of tutorials. And also, I still have uh, my class going on. So you can uh, come and join my class. Uh, there'll be a digital painting 101 and character design and all kinds of fun class stuff, group class. And you can also do a one on one. So, all right, guys. Well, have a good night. And I will see you in the QA session on Saturday. This one's a little late. It should have been released yesterday, but I didn't get enough time to do it. So thanks again. Bye-bye. Hey, uh, thank you for all your support on Patreon. These are the, my Patreon level four and up. So uh, I will read out the name, but it's gonna take a while. It's uh, growing quite a bit. And on the right side of the screen are the tutorial that might be useful for you. So you can just click on any of these and then go watch the tutorial. Thank you for watching guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.